I'm one of the Envoy senior maintainers. I've been working on the Envoy project data plane uh, for ages now. Um, in the last two years, I've been focused on upstream enhancements uh, largely targeted towards Envoy Mobile. So I'm leading the team at Google, a uh, unified client network team that's been working heavily with uh, JP and the folks over at Lyft, getting Envoy Mobile uh, up and working. So when we joined this project, um, it was kind of clear to me that the Envoy network stack really had been written for use in data centers. So you had things like having to hard code your upstream protocol, right? And in your data center, you know if your endpoints are speaking H2B1 or H2B2. Uh, but when you're working on the open internet, uh, that's, that's generally not how things work. Um, also, you roughly had to hard code the address family. So the, the, we did have things like v4 and v6 preferred, but essentially Envoy would resolve at one address and try to use it. And again, on mobile networks, if that address family wasn't supported, you were out of luck. You didn't have connectivity. Um, this is obviously suboptimal for Envoy Mobile, but this also isn't great. Again, the Envoy Mobile um, upstream code is the same code that Envoy uses. So if you're using Envoy as a dynamic forward proxy, say as an egress gateway, you may have these same problems. And the fixes that we did work both for upstream Envoy with dynamic forward proxy, as well as Envoy Mobile. The first thing we did is add ALPN support. Um, and that basically gives you, we added a new upstream configuration that lets you negotiate whether you use HTTP2 or HTTP1 as part of the TLS handshake. So there's no latency penalty, right? This is done in line, you know, a couple extra bytes on the wire. Um, and it'll automatically use the best available protocol. If you're talking to an older endpoint on the internet that doesn't support ALPN, it just fails over to using HTTP11. So again, you're pretty much guaranteed to get your traffic through. Envoy defaults to assuming your endpoint is going to use HTTP2. So what does this mean? If you're um, starting up your Envoy with a cold start, it hasn't talked to this endpoint ever before, uh, and you have a flux of incoming requests, it will try to establish one TCP connection, assuming that those various uh, streams can be served over one connection. However, we didn't want a latency penalty if that endpoint supported HTTP1, right, where you could only serve one request on one connection at a time. So we added what we call this alternate service cache. And the alt service cache caches that protocol. So subsequent streams, as they come in, will remember that HTTP 1.1 was used and prefetch one connection per incoming request. This alt service cache is cluster local by default. So again, if you're a cloud provider and you don't want information shared between different customer clusters, um, it's completely isolated. But if you're running this in-house and you want to share this information so that if you have, for some reason, two dynamic forward proxy clusters and you want uh, to not have to you know, look these up every time on cold start, uh, you can really easily configure different clusters to share this cache. For config, um, it's pretty simple. So if you're using modern Envoy cluster configuration, you'd have a section explaining your HTTP protocol options, and you would have had something like explicit HTTP config, here's my H2 config. You just replace that with auto config, that's it. Um, optionally, again, you can add in this alternate protocol cache uh, if you want to share caches across different clusters. The next thing we added was HTTP 3 support. As uh, Matt mentioned, this is one of the features that we're most excited for Envoy having going forward. Um, and while Envoy has been able to terminate HTTP 3, speaking HTTP 3 upstream is a little bit different. So we added two modes here. One is explicit HTTP 3. This is for in data center use when you know that UDP 443 or whatever port you configure is going to work. On the internet, that's not a good idea to use. So we added auto HTTP 3 uh, support so that um, if your ISP that you're on is blocking UDP 443, right, then Envoy will just do the right thing. So explicit HTTP 3 will just fail if UDP is black hole, but it will guarantee that you use H3 and you don't have to look at your stats and metrics to make sure it's being used. When you're on the internet, um, auto HTTP 3 relies on the, the standards uh, alternate service header. So it won't use HTTP 3 unless your endpoint advertises that it supports it, because at this point, it is not the case that most servers on the internet do. However, if H3 is advertised, Envoy will try to use it. Um, but it will also attempt TCP after a short timeout. So again, if your ISP is blocking it, if you're behind a corporate firewall or something else, um, you'll end up using whichever connection is established more quickly um, for the best available latency. Shortly after we added HTTP 3 support, we added support for zero range of handshakes. This is one of the signature features of HTTP 3. Basically, if you've communicated with an endpoint before, you cache your credentials. And then the next time you talk to that endpoint, you send those credentials and then it can immediately start sending uh, get and head requests without waiting for a TCP handshake or a TLS handshake. 
So this is awesome for latency. Um, it'll be used by default for safe methods. But again, if for some reason you don't want to use it, you can turn it off via a per root uh, early data policy configuration. So hard-coded H3 config, it's as simple as taking your H2 config, crossing out the two, and adding three. Um, there is one other difference elsewhere in your cluster config, though, because um, we basically have to repair the crypto to do HTTP3 um, logic. Instead of wrapping your crypto config in a TLS transport socket, like you would have normally done for encryption, um, you wrap it in a quick transport socket. But if you look at these two yellow boxes, you're literally just copy-pasting the config you had into a different wrapper proto. So it, it is a pretty easy transition. For autoconfig, again, it looks a lot like autoconfig for uh, HTTP2. Um, you just say your HTTP3 protocol options, but again, this time you have to include your alternate protocols cache. It's required because Envoy won't work without it. It won't remember that that endpoint supported HTTP3. So we just fail config on startup so you can't make that mistake. Same thing in your filter chain. You can figure that service cache. So as you get response headers, we insert again uh, into that cache uh, so that Envoy will remember what protocol was used. The last cool feature we added was um, Happy Eyeball. So Happy Eyeballs is the de facto way to use IPv6 on the internet. Um, it basically attempts connections to uh, preferred address families while trying connection both to IPv4 and IPv6. So uh, from my desktop, I did a DNS selector for google.com, I got a v6 address and a v4 address. The implementation will try the v6 first, and then if no connection's established, again, my ISP is blocking it for some reason, uh, after a 300 millisecond pause, we'll attempt a connection to IPv4. Um, and again, this is fantastic. It resolved a lot of issues on various carriers and networks um, where you get to resolve both addresses, but only one of them works, and it's a surprise as to which one will. Um, and then again, to use this, all you do is configure Envoy to use DNS lookup family all. So it'll resolve not just one, but often multiple v4 and v6 addresses. So also when you're migrating you know, across networks and whatnot, it can be very helpful to try different endpoints because again, the route to one of them may be blocked. Um, happy eyeballs configuration, again, super easy, where you would have your DNS lookup family for like v4 only or v4 preferred, you just stick in all. And then all of the logic gets done under the hood for you. Uh, in conclusion, we've added a bunch of new, really powerful features to Envoy, and we've done our best to make sure that they have very simple configuration. I want to call out that the team that did all this work is the team that launched HTTP3 for Google. So we have you know, years and years of experience tuning HTTP3, tuning timeouts, tuning these failovers to be optimal for both Google's web search, which we really deeply care about, um, and it's very, very latency sensitive, along with YouTube, right, this, this long haul streaming type traffic and making sure that we have kind of optimal throughput and bandwidth uh, and quality of experience um, for both, you know, kind of your, your fast traffic and your long haul traffic. So we have really high confidence that kind of the default configuration is going to work well on almost all networks and almost all conditions. And again, you know, we have knobs, so if you're in some weird special corner case, um, you know, you can tweak it accordingly. Uh, as usual, there's a bunch of examples of this and documentation on Envoy Proxy IO. And if you have uh, questions and concerns we didn't get to today, we're, we're all on Slack. Uh, so feel free to ping us. Do we have any questions? Yeah, yeah, so we've got a list of other things. Um, Envoy, we, what we don't yet support and we want to is connection migration for HTTP3. So essentially, uh, JP mentioned earlier on that, especially for Lyft, they're doing a lot of like walking out of houses or buildings, you know, and you're switching from Wi-Fi. Um, so we, we've had good luck in Google for actually migrating those connections like from your Wi-Fi to your cellular interface. Uh, we haven't yet done that plumbing for Envoy Mobile and it is on our roadmap. Um, the other one we want to do is better handling for HTTP 1.1. It hasn't been a high priority for us or Lyft because we all use H2 and H3, um, but it is really important, right, to, to handle like legacy cases on the internet. And so there's things that um, kind of best in practice for network stack, like when you get one request to a given endpoint and you know you're using HTTP 1, it makes sense to prefetch a number where you can hard code that number of connections. So like browsers, if you talk to google.com, will immediately establish six connections because they're like, if you have one request, you're likely to have more following on. So there are a couple things like that and we've got a list of improvements that we're hoping to do uh, in Q4 and then going forward. 
Any other questions? Cool. I'll hand off to the next speaker. Thank you. Mm -hmm.